it's, it's, this is the last Sunday of the Thanksgiving month. You know it is a tradition in SBCA that we have Thanksgiving month and also month of praise in December. So by the end of uh, this year, if you have any move or inspiration from the Holy Spirit that you want to give thanks to the Lord in the assembly of God's people, then please feel free to do so. I hope that we will have one or two people coming on stage and give us your testimony and praise the Lord for your life or for, you, for what you encountered this year. Uh, if you do, you know, if you, you feel that you can do that, let Brother Kyle know, okay? Um, my high school friend visited me last week. Uh, I don't feel ashamed to show you this picture. She's 61, and I just turned 60 a few couple weeks ago. Um, and I took her to a nice Japanese restaurant, and we sat there three hours, for three hours, just chat. Um, because we had so much to catch up. Just like a Brother Kyle said the last Sunday, um, he said that when we are distant from God, the things that we can talk about are history only. So nothing, you know, nothing. Um, yeah. So we, so we took. It took us a long time to fill the gap, and when we were, we, when we had to leave the the restaurant because it's already three hours. So we were about just talk about what happened in our present time. You know, the, the, uh, the, late, the late things, uh, uh, late, the things that happened lately. I have been trying to bring her, okay, you can, you can. <laughs> I've been trying to bring her to the Lord for 40 years, yeah, because she was, she was my best friend, and she's still my best friend, one of my best friends. Um, yet she's still not baptized, and she said, well, Nancy, I want you or Han Chie baptize me one day. And I said, oh, don't wait for us. You know, you, you know, I don't know when you will come to our church. Just get baptized, you know, if you truly believe uh, God. And she, had, um, she has a pretty tough life even up to now. A couple of times when we talk about the past years, the tears were in her eyes as well as in mine. I'm not sure how most of you would do when you reach to 60. You probably think that's a long time later. It's a dinosaur age when I was in some of your age, college or high school. I, you know, when people say that they are 60 years old, you know, I, you know, this is out of picture. I don't want to talk to them. But the truth is that actually it went a lot faster than I thought. So, I want you to think about it. What kind of life do you want to live? You will reach to 60 by God's grace, right? A very comfortable life with a rich husband, two or three successful children, and lovely grandchildren, your less health, a lot of people care about their health nowadays very much. Freedom to do anything you want. Is that a good life that you anticipate or you're working on? But would you be thankful for your life when you reach to 60? Or you will be a greedy old man, never satisfied, or a grouchy wife that complain about your husband and your family all the time. What kind of life do you want? What kind of person you want to be when you reach to 60? I know some people already in 60s, like me, but most of you are not yet. So you have 40 years, 30 years, 20 years to go. But think about it. What kind of person you want to be? 
Okay. Oh no, I don't want to be a complaining old lady. I don't want to be a grouchy old man. I want to be thankful. Then the next question is, whom are you going to thank for? Oh, to give your thanks to. Whom? Your husband? Your children? Your personal trainer? You keep you healthy. Your financial advisor, because uh, he gave you wise advice to make you rich. Your teachers who taught you everything you need to know. Your parents who raised you up. Yes, probably you need to thank all of them. But would you feel that you thanks to those human actually is very self-centered. You probably never thought about it. You know, I'm thankful. I give thanks, you know, I appreciate people around me. I always say thank you. I always, you know, do something. However, you probably do not realize it's all because these people fulfill what you want for your life. in which you are the most, per, most important person. Christian Thanksgiving is different. How different? God is the center of our life. He is the most high like the scriptures say, like what, the song that we just sang this morning. Right? We, we want to exalt him. But when we sing it, do we really think that he is the most high? I thank him because I am not worthy. He is worthy. Only he is worthy. Christian thanksgiving is a worship. Our thanksgiving is a worship. It's not a requirement. It's not a law. It's not a something that you have to do it because you're a Christian. Thanksgiving is a worship. Giving thanks to God is a worship out of my heart. It's a worship of the truth and the spirit. So today, I'm not talking about theory or theology, but I hope the Holy Spirit will inspire all of us, every one of us, to have acts of thanksgiving throughout the, the, the message now, or at least in the end of the Sunday service. Okay, that's my prayer. Okay, we don't just hear it because Brother Kyle has given us a mini-series of Live Thanks. Right for three weeks, and I sat in last week. It was last Sunday. It was a wonderful message. But now, you know, as we close this Thanksgiving month, I don't want us just to listen to another sermon, another not so good message. I want all of us to engage in this Thanksgiving worship. I want all of you to participate, even when you are sitting here listening. You thought. You probably think that you're you know, passively sitting here because my parents are here or because it's a Sunday. I have to be here. No, I want you now at this moment to start giving thanks to the Lord as we go through the Bible scripture, so go through the text. So most of, in most of the time, we will just study the word. Okay? Let the Holy Spirit inspire us. Let's read Psalm 50 one more time. Verse 14 through 15. Let's read out loud. Sacrifice thanks to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High. And call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. Those who sacrifice thank offerings honor me. And to the blameless I will show my salvation. Do you have any vow with the Lord? Or have you? 
Here, there are two, uh, several key words, the key ver verbs, sacrifice. We probably will not use that when we do Thanksgiving, right? But here, the psalm, the psalmist is saying, sacrifice, thank offerings. It is, a, you need to sacrifice something. And then, I will deliver you, God will do his work, and I will honor him. Honor. That's another verb, honor. And the last one, or maybe you can, have a, you can find more. Sorry, that's sacrifice, deliver, and honor. So thanksgiving is a worship that honors God. Right? So if we don't understand that, then we probably think that you know, thanksgiving, you know, God just wants to be thanked. You know, he... You know, he, he, do, he does favor to us, and he just collects the thanksgiving because he likes to be thanked. No. God said, when you sacrifice thanks offering, you honor him. You honor him. The, the, the Hebrew words for thank offering, that's a one word, it means that you acknowledge his grace. You acknowledge who he is and what he has done. And then you give thanks. So you don't give thanks unless the offer, whoever offered the thanksgiving sacrifice or thanksgiving, uh, yeah, thanksgiving of, uh, the sacrifice, had experienced God's work on his behalf. And you have to be humble enough to acknowledge God's work on you. I heard um, from a parent, uh, uh, she told me that one day her daughter say, uh, almost cried, and she said, Mom, I am actually not that good. You know, when people praise me, it makes me feel that that's not true. I'm not that good. I, you know, I... I'm very confident and very encouraged by that young sister, what, what the young sister say. Yes, I need to be humble enough to acknowledge that it's all because of his grace. By his grace, I become what I am. It's not because I'm, I'm a good person. God doesn't save good person, good people. God saves sinners. So, you know, we are no better than anybody else in order to be saved. I need to acknowledge that this is God's work. And the second word, sacrifice. Giving thanks need to sacrifice. You need to offer something to express your gratitude. When you offer something, you don't offer something that you don't need, right? You just give it to the Salvation Army, something that you don't need. No, that's not a sacrifice. You sacrifice the thanks offering. What's something that you feel is important, tra treasure, precious to you? So would you like to think of what you can offer to God in order to, to express your gratitude? Honor. God deserves me from, uh, God delivers me from trouble, sins, old flesh, and I honor him. And how should I, how can I honor him? Through sacrificing thank sacrificing thank offerings, it is so straightforward and simple. But we can, for some reasons, you know, like the first Sunday message that uh, Kyle delivered on the first Sunday of uh, November. What blocks me from giving thanks to God? It is so simple, right? He delivers me, and I give thanks to Him, and I honor Him. It's a Logical, very reasonable, very straightforward. In, if my children thank me in front of others, in front of their peers, I would feel very honored. <laughs> Instead, if they criticize me, <laughs> complain about me, they only want me to satisfy their needs. 
but they do not give thanks for what I have done for them. I will feel very beaten down. I feel very shameful, very, you know, don't know what to do, right? And for the same reason, God is honored when we give thanks to him in the assembly of God's people, in front of others, in front of my relatives, in front of my peers, He's honored. There are so many things that give us reasons to thank God. And that's why Matt Remins' song is called 10,000 Reasons. Do you have a reason to give thanks to God? I want you to do now, okay? Yeah, not just a passively um, sitting there. Let's read Psalm 103, verses 1 to five. One more time. Do you have that? 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your inequities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with a loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfy you mouth with good things, so that it, you it renew the like the eagles. And the psalmist kept going until verse 19, 18, because he got so many things to give thanks to God. Thanksgiving is a worship that responds to God's work on us. Forgiveness, healing, salvation, loving kindness, tender mercy, satisfaction, satisfying us with good things, satisfying the longings in our hearts, answering our prayers, be our companion while we are lonely. Renew our strength when we are weak. So can you count God's blessings now on you? Benefits that he has given to you for this year, during this year? Anything that you want to give thanks? And you can say that, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and that all that is within me. Anything? And thanksgiving is a worship testifying that we do not forget his grace. It's so easy for us to forget things, right? If we don't mention it, we don't testify it, we don't, we don't talk to, about it, then we forget about it. Is that true? Yeah, talking about forgetting things, I think uh, I have a lot more experience than most of you, or mo all of you. <laughs> But hopefully, we don't forget God's grace. We don't forget his benefits. If we don't forget God's benefits on us, then naturally, we will remember other people's help on us, a grace, a grace to us. Okay, so God first. So do you remember good things that happen in your life? Do you feel hurt when people for, forget your benefits? Do you? You don't? You have a big heart if you don't. Why? We, normally we hurt, right? We feel hurt that when, when we're so nice to others, we try our best, we, we go extra miles we, you know, to help somebody, and then... And, even sometimes we sacrifice ourselves, you know, our own needs in order for others to get, to get the benefit. But people don't remember it. They forget about it. Do you feel hurt? Parents, do you, hurt, do you feel hurt? Yes? Church leaders, do you feel hurt? Co-workers? Yes, we do.
But do we forget the good things that we have received from God? So why does the recollection of God's grace inspire and strengthen our worship? Why? We need to think about it. Right? We don't just sing it, but we have to think about it. When we sing it, we, we sing it from the bottom of our heart. God, I thank you. You are such a good father. You are a good, good father. You're so good, so gracious to me. I'm not worthy. I don't deserve it. But yet, you're so good to me. Thanksgiving is an evidence of freedom from self Centeredness. We talk about freedom in the Holy Spirit this year, right? Wherever the Spirit is, there is a deliverance, there is a freedom. So that I, because of Thanksgiving is evidence of a freedom from self centeredness, so that I'm no longer bounded by not giving thanks nature. Giving thanks is the character of the new life that you and I, we all have. Instead, I give. What, I, what do I get? Give. I give money. I give time. I give energy. I give hands. I give my feet. I give my life. I give my love. I can give. Because what I have is from God. That's a testimony that I'm a free, I'm a, you know, I give. I don't just get, I give. I share. What can I share? I share my house. I share my children. Some young parents, share your children with God's kingdom. I share my knowledge. I share my salvation. I share the good things. I have from God. I serve. I serve God and God's house. I serve the world. I serve people around me. I serve for the glory of God, not for myself. I voluntarily I serve. I voluntarily give. I voluntarily share because it's act of gratitude. I reach out to people who are in need. I reach out who are different from me. Normally, we only reach out to people that, that we like. Yeah, I like you. So I share gospel. You know, I want to invite you to my church. I reach out to people that I normally don't hang out with. I reach out to people who are lonely. I reach out to people who need Jesus. Anyone who needs Jesus, that's my mission. I woke up at 3 o'clock on November 5th. That's my 60th birthday. I could not fall back to sleep, so I went downstairs pondering, what should I give it to myself as a present? to give thanks to God. I need a car. I needed a car. I need a lot of things. But I want to give thanks to God for the 60 years of my life. So I turned on my computer, started searching local organizations so that I can support or adopt an orphan. So a few days, I, I shared this with David, and then a few days later, I, you know, they re realized that I had a, I, uh, I couldn't fall asleep because of the jet lag. And so I woke up at 4 o'clock probably again, and so he asked me, how many children have you ado adopted this morning? I, it's out of the heart of gratitude. I thank God. I unleash a life of gratitude. 
because it was not in me. But now I have that freedom so I can unleash a life of gratitude to glorify my God. For thanksgiving is a character of the new life. If I let the Holy Spirit manage my life, I can do it. I have that ability to do it. It's just I need to let the Holy Spirit be the boss of my life. Last year, around this time, we had 15 people in Haiti. Remember that? Can we show some pictures to fresh our memories? We were shocked by how much these people need them physically and spiritually. We experienced miracles. We, we witnessed that God intervened with his supernatural power. My nephew Byron, some of you know, know him, a junior, uh, he's a junior in Berkeley, told me that he could not come to our house for this Thanksgiving because he had to go down, drive down to SoCal to visit parents of uh, one of his uh, friends. His friend died as one of 85 people in the, um, in the Nice attack happened in August. He was one of the tourists and a crazy truck driver, ter terrorist, just killed 85 people and several hundred people got injured. Unfortunately, this Berkeley student was one of them. So Byron and his, um, uh, his roommate went down to comfort um, the friend's parents during the Thanksgiving. So we live in an area that has people from all over the places, from different backgrounds with the different needs. They are right around you and me in school, at work, even in the supermarket or in, in our, around the neighborhood, right next door. They are right around, yeah, they are right around, to, uh, around you and me. But we don't need to go far to the mission field, to Africa, to Haiti, to China, to India, in order to reach people who need Jesus. But why don't we see them? Only when we go to the mission field, when we go to the Haiti, when we go to China, when we go to you know, some other places, Russia or... Because when we live here in our daily life, we're so focused on ourselves. So we don't see people around us that they need Jesus. And those people are some people that we can share, we can give, we can serve, we can reach out. The psalmist of Psalm 103 kept counting God's blessings. This says that from verses 3 until verse 19. Then he said, Bless the Lord, in verse 20. Bless the Lord, your, you, his angels, who excel in strength, who do his words, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you, his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his words, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Not only me, I want Everyone to bless the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. I want the whole universe to bless the Lord for his holy name. So I had many hardships in my life. Not too long, 60 years only. But I already experienced a lot of challenges, difficulties, a lot of tears, a lot of loneliness, illness. You will. Because the life is not good. That's the truth. But I have many reasons to give, give thanks to God. Have you found enough reasons to give thanks to God? Even your life is probably shorter than mine. But have you found a good reason? So I would like to ask the worship team to come up and we're just to sing a very simple song. They just learned it this morning. Or older contemporary songs. So 
verse 103, uh, 103 verse 1. If you agree, if you have found the good reasons, enough reasons to give thanks to God, would you please sacrifice your thanks offering to honor our God, your Lord and Savior? You want to offer money? Feel free to do so. It's a Thanksgiving money. By offering something that you feel important to you. Offering the fruits of your lips, of your heart. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Let's sing together. Bless the Lord. Oh, sorry, I'm singing, singing the wrong one. Glorify our God, honor Him. 